Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Oxygen Not Included. I'll admit it's been a few days since I last played this IRL, got a little ahead of myself in the last recording session, so I need to pick back up and figure out what we were working on. So we have been setting up some coolants, right? We used our cool slush geyser and we've been pumping out some nice cold water and sending it down into these reservoirs, with which we have been cooling off an electrolyzer set up and producing some gosh dang cold air up in this area, which is going to help cool off the base quite a bit from where we had been. It's not perfect, though, because we are still producing an unacceptable amount of heat in a few different locations. One, the rock crusher's not been great. Two, incubators, but I mean, that's something I think I'm just going to have to live with. And three, a cold generator, but our natural gas geysers have been doing a pretty good job of providing power for us for a while. So I don't think we have to worry too much about that. When is this guys are going to turn back on out of curiosity? In 3.2 cycles. So pretty soon we're going to start producing a heck of a lot more of this cool slush. Which means I'm not feeling too worried about the fact that we don't have a lot more coolant left. What I am concerned about is whether or not we're going to have enough um, liquid to continue through the cooling system that I've already set up. So we may want to rework this slightly and kind of send this directly back into its own tank. And I think that's going to be a good idea, but, but, uh, one problem with that is I kind of, you know, vacuumed this area out and didn't leave myself a lot of space. Yeah, admittedly, I didn't think that one through very well. I should have just made these each independent loops rather than, you know, what I've done. So I might have to open this back up and, once again, vacuum it all out. We'll see. One other thing that I realized I probably did not need to do over here is I added a bunch of radiant pipes in the hydrogen section of my electrolyzer setup. That is unnecessary because uh, the hydrogen is immediately getting sucked up and sent into a generator. So any heat that I am taking away from the hydrogen and putting into my water is kind of just excess heat that I did not need. So I think we need to dig back into this sucker, open her up, replace all the radiant pipes with something else and then yeah I gotta I gotta get this dang thing fixed Ugh. something else I want to work on today is some proper metal refinement so we can get rid of this rock crusher there is a station down over here in the refinement section called a metal refinery and this thing is going to take some raw metal and turn it into metal ore it's a heck of a lot more efficient than a rock crusher however it's going to produce a lot of heat, and it requires a liquid coolant to be siphoned into it. Now, we could toss in, let's say, some excess polluted water, and I probably will do exactly that, but the output water is going to be a lot, lot hotter. So what I might want to do is actually set this up kind of close to the ice biome, and we'll actually just make use of some of the natural cooling that's already occurring in this area. Again, using some radiant pipes, maybe even a very small pool of liquid to kind of encourage a bit more thermal conductivity. And that might be enough to kind of keep the metal refinery going. I don't need this in a central location in the base producing lots of heat. It's way too hot to allow that. So down over here might just be optimal. Now here's something I'm just thinking about. Hidden beneath all of this ice is an anti-entropy thermal nullifier. And if I recall correctly, the way that this thing works is you feed a very small amount of hydrogen into it every second, like 10 grams of hydrogen. And this thing super chills all of the air around it. Used correctly, this thing could probably not only cool my metal refinery, but also many, many other things. Huh. There is, um, there is something to be said about using this. It would take a lot of hydrogen. If I can find a way to extract lots of hydrogen, get it into a tank, and also fill a chamber with hydrogen, since it is the most thermally conductive gas, uh, maybe we could just kind of pump some radiant pipes of the metal refinery through this, and that would take care of all of my needs. It's certainly an option. Oh, be careful, by the way, about that. We used it there, buddy. Um, it is, you know, kind of slightly radioactive. Radioactive! Radioactive! Yep, yep, that's the thing we're doing there. So please be very careful. Anyway, I mean, we are currently taking a bunch of hydrogen and pumping into a generator which I don't have to do. I could instake, instead take the hydrogen we are producing from my electrolyzers, pump that into a tank, and start filling up a sealed chamber. Huh. I do, I do actually kind of like really like this idea. It's kind of rare that I get access to a thermo nullifier in the first place. Like, why not, dude? Okay, so we got this sucker back up and running. For the most part, as usual, the hydrogen is mostly going where I want it to go, which is going to be all the way over to this little tank right up a yaw. 
Okay, so we'll be storing up some of that beautiful hydrogen gas, and nothing else should even be able to come through that because we have effectively a mechanical hydrogen sorting lock over here, right? So that's pretty awesome. So we'll start gradually filling ourselves up with a fair bit of this hydrogen. Then I need to find a way to send this down over here easily. Um, best thing to do probably is going to be to get a proper insulated room around this thing. We're probably gonna wanna have ourselves another one of those liquid lock situations. Gosh dang, I'm kind of starting to hate those liquid locks, but they're so dang effective. How can I possibly say no? I do feel like getting around in here, however, is taking way too long to do like literally anything. So uh, it might be time to look into placing some sort of an airlock system for our suits, which we haven't really been making use of up to this point, but now might very well be the time. I need people to have enough oxygen already set up in their suits that they can get down here and just work consistently in very heavily fluctuating temperatures without having to run all the way back after two seconds, right? How's the temperature looking inside of the base? For the most part, okay. We're definitely seeing colder gas get into the base over here. Not as much over here as I would like, but that's because we're having some gas over pressure issues. So we're not quite able to, um, to offload the cooler air over here as much as I otherwise would like, which I consider a little unfortunate, but uh, oh well. Um, the only way I can fix that really is to find a way to get the gas to kind of flow a bit better. Maybe if I were to set up some little airflow tiles down over here, that could help a little bit. Let some of the gas kind of leave this room and go down. Yeah, that might help kind of spread this out just a tiny little bit more so I can continue cooling off this area. I'm also going to set up a room over here for another set of barracks because we are producing a ridiculous amount of food thanks to our mushrooms. So uh, I kind of like the idea of bringing in a few more dupes. It's been a few episodes. Okay, the first of these Atmo suits is done. We are filling up the docks, and wait a minute, what's this? Oh, Bicel has already found his way in. Excellent, all right, so, and there goes Ruby as well. So we should be producing, uh, and immediately they're hungry. You're just wasting my time, aren't you, at this point? But anyway, they should be able to get around now and start working over here a lot safer, which is great. We've almost filled up one of these tanks with hydrogen in the meantime, almost. So I'm gonna build out a second one over here. And I should note, the metal refinery requires 1,200 watts to operate, which is kind of a lot. I'm pretty sure that if I have only one dedicated wire working on this, we can use this without it overloading. It'll be stressed, but probably not break. Could be wrong on that point, though, so we're gonna keep an eye on this little stretch of wire to make sure I don't need to have heavy watt wires going all the way over here. Now, one downside to these Atmo suits, and the reason I've avoided them up to this point, is uh, they do take a while to use. Um, not just because people have to stop at the gate, but literally, it slows down their athletic skill by a pretty hefty amount, so they walk a lot slower. I'm just sort of taking the gamble that we've reached the stage of the game where the slower movement is preferable to how often they have to abandon their task to go and seek oxygen somewhere else. Hold the heck and heck on, what happened over here? Somehow carbon dioxide got into my system. What? How did this even- okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Obviously we can't allow carbon dioxide to go over this direction or it ain't gonna work. So wait, I've got carbon dioxide in here now? Gosh dang it. 1,485 grams of the dang stuff. God's sake. Right, 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 right. Okay, hang on. Um, I'm not sure how this happened, if I'm honest. The mechanical uh, lock should have been pretty much foolproof. In fact, there shouldn't have even been any carbon dioxide in here in the first place. Oh, I found the problem. I'm an idiot. I mean, you know, what else is new, am I right? But still, like, this is, this, oh, gosh dang it. I had a four-way connection here with carbon dioxide coming out of this thing. Yeah, no freaking wonder that, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, that's annoying. Um, we'll just kind of empty the pipes out and we'll try that again. <laughs> gosh dang it. How thick can you get? I am gonna reinstall this hydrogen generator, by the way. Um, we've been having enough trouble keeping power consistently running for this uh, gas pump. And that's kind of unfortunate, because I would really like to keep this thing running pretty much all the time and not have this whole no power thing going on. We're kind of pulling a lot of draw on these wires. I mean, this is what, let's see, about 1200-ish mm, watts. 
Yeah, actually, if anything, this should be kind of a warning that uh, we might have issues with this metal refinery, but full steam ahead. Damn the torpedoes. Oh, crap. One mistake I made. I forgot to actually hook back up the plumbing after I was doing my editing. We've been pumping some fairly hot air into the base for a little bit, and you can see the difference that makes. Oh, dang it. It's all right, it's all right, we can recover from that. That's uh, a little unfortunate, but yeah, these are the tiny little details I've gotta make sure that I pay attention to going forward. One thing I wouldn't mind doing, if we can, is actually set up an ice dispenser right here into the main water tank. That may sound a little bit silly, but basically what we could do, if we get this thing hooked up over here like so, is we can set this for being sweep only, Right, and then also for liquefiable regular ice and snow. No polluted ice allowed. We don't want to have germs and nastiness in here, but it's going to toss ice cubes basically into this, and they'll sink down here, and once it gets up to temperature, it's going to melt and turn into a tile of water. But the result is, it's also going to be cooling down this thing. So this, again, will kind of function like a natural heat sink or battery for a lot of the air around here. It's going to gradually pull thermal energy into it. Not very efficiently, mind you, but it will. Now here's something kind of weird that I wouldn't normally do. I am going to place a pitcher pump to pick up some polluted water and drop it off over here. Why? Well, because the freezing point for polluted water is minus 20 degrees Celsius as opposed to regular water, which is supposed to be about zero. And since the air here is so stinking cold, I'm pretty sure if I put regular water down here, it's just going to turn into a block of ice. Which works pretty good for trying to create some sort of a vacuum, but ultimately isn't going to do me a whole lot of favors. I really want this to not melt, or sorry, I want this to turn not into a solid block, uh, so that when I have to mine through it, it maintains a liquid seal connection. So I really want this to be liquid, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm actually going to deliberately pitch her up, a little bit of polluted water just to drop off over here. Can I point out, by the way, that my plan to get rid of all of the nasty slime lung germs has more or less worked. This area is basically completely clean, at least until you get down over here, where you have some germs. And I'm not really sure how these guys have survived up over here. Apparently, there is a tiny little bit of polluted oxygen still hanging around. We may want to go ahead and get rid of that stuff. But anyway, yeah, so, um, I mean, it's all carbon dioxide, I can't use it anyway, but at the very least, we have eliminated the possibility of contracting slime lung through moving through this area. Of course, that has already been eliminated simply by using the Atmos suits. I'm pretty sure people can't pick up any sicknesses going through that anyway, but that's beside the point. Now, actually, something that just occurred to me, wait a minute, polluted water creating polluted oxygen. Oh, crud. This may not work very well. I may not be able to achieve a perfect vacuum, I think, is what I'm basically learning coming out of this arrangement. I'm not sure that's really going to be a good option for me, but... Okay. This already has some sort of a pipe going into it, by the way. Uh, we should probably deconstruct that. I believe those are obsidian pipes, which are thermally reactive and not really what I have in mind. Uh, I do want to fill this chamber up. Let's think about how we, what we want to do with this, though. I need to clean this out first. We'll have hydrogen go in here. I need to pump some hydrogen in here to create a thermally uh, reactive room. And then beyond that, we know we wanted to set up some plumbing. So I've got to get some radiant pipes up and running over here. Uh, what is going to be the best way to do this, do we think? Something kind of like this, maybe? Hmm, is it going to be enough to do that? That's a question. I don't know. I mean, it, it should get really, really cold. Like, this thing basically, like, almost infinitely cools a room. Down to, like, minus 130 degrees Celsius is, like, the absolute maximum. Or something along those lines. So it's going to get, like, really freaking cold. What I could do is set up some radiant pipes. And then create some insulated pipes going up over here. And then I could create a liquid valve that is going to be something kind of like this with pipes going into it and coming out of it. And the idea here would be I could create a liquid pipe thermosensor and basically if the water is for whatever reason too warm still I can keep sending it back in an infinite loop until it's cooled down enough that we can send it back up to the refinery Yes, I like this idea 
All right, I'm getting a network of pipes as well as some gas pipes in here, just in case I decide that I need them. And I'm gonna try building these out of Wolframite instead of out of gold. Why? Because Wolframite is a new metal we've accessed in the ice biome, and it has a very high thermal conductivity, which I like. So that's the material of choice for me. It's better than gold amalgam, for sure. I mean, yeah, gold is, like, thermally reactive, and that's nice, but high thermal conductivity, that's perfect for any sort of irradiant pipe. Okay, so our setup ends up looking something kind of like this, again, with some future-proofing in mind for later. So the what I'm going to do is have polluted water come through here, drop off into the fuel refinery, which is then going to start pumping liquid out this direction. It's going to cross over the bridge, and it's going to go down this away into the cooling system, at which point it comes up over here. We're going to detect what the temperature is. If it's too hot, I'm going to turn on the liquid uh, shutoff valve, so it forces the liquid back down this way to keep going until we're happy with it, at which point it's going to skip this and move along back into the fuel refinery. Though it does occur to me one thing I should do is actually hook this up. You can't see it because of the bridge, but I don't have anywhere for this to output. Now we do, so it goes right back into the same system. Okay. Hopefully this is going to work the way I envision it, because it's kind of time for us to go ahead and start sealing this thing off. And that should do it. Complete perfect vacuum. Okay. So for power, we are going to disconnect this. Snip. There we go. And for our ventilation system, let's go for a quick little snip over there as well. I don't want this going on anymore, just in case. Okay. So we got that all set up. Now, if we simply hook up... Well, let's first start, let's, you know what, let's first start by hooking up the plumbing this way. I was going to say we can just let it go, but then it's going to go into the system, and maybe I don't want to do that yet. So let's use a gas pipe and start doing an outlet like so. There we go. And of course it would be carbon dioxide first. Hold up, I can use a trick here. We can snip and snip, 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 snip. There we go. And now all I have to do <laughs> is come through here and extract the pipe contents. This is a way to just get rid of and isolate the gases that I never wanted to be in here in the first place. Thank you very much, Bysol. I appreciate it. So now we've got some carbon dioxide in some little canisters over here. I'm probably going to have to do this at least a couple more times because we did get an unfortunate amount of carbon dioxide inside of this thing. Ugh, so stupid. We've got a bit of an emergency over here that I only just now realize is going on. So the temperature inside of our Dreco farm has grown to untenable levels. Reason being, it's now hot enough that our meal wood is unable to um, is unable to grow. And if that stuff can't grow, that means our Drecos have nothing to eat, which means they're only a few cycles away from certain death. So, uh, you know what? Um, emergency here. Let, let's stop everything else we're doing. I'm going to place down at least a couple of thermoregulators. Now, I don't love using this, because what's gonna happen is we're gonna pump some gas out through here into the thermoregulator. It's gonna cool them down, and then we can pump it right back in. This is gonna discharge a whole lot of heat in its immediate vicinity. So I really don't want to do this unless I feel like I absolutely have to. But we have got to cool this stuff down, and soon. You know one thing I could do um, temporarily, which is probably not great, but you know what? It's going to prevent these guys from dying. Uh, a quick little critter, critter drop-off over here by all of my br uh, bristle blossoms. Because, in addition to mealwood, that is something these guys are able to eat. So we're going to go ahead and close these doors. I'm going to build this thing quickly. We'll wrangle up our Drekos, toss them in here, let them eat, and then we can just bring them back over here. And that buys me time to cool this area off before they all die. Okay, here we go. So we are going to be siphoning up a bunch of hydrogen and carbon dioxide. I don't really care what. What temperature are we looking at going in? This is going to be about 25 degrees Celsius. It comes out at 21.5. Then we run it through a second round, and it's going to come out approximately 8.5. Very, very cold in comparison, but again, we need to kind of rapidly chill down this room. Then I'm happy to go ahead and turn this stuff back off. The carbon dioxide is going to sink back down to the bottom of the room and hopefully start cooling off the mealwood. 
Once I see the mealwood are in a good, reasonable temperature, preferably around 20 degrees Celsius, that's when I turn this thing off, especially before these scenes get too dang hot. In the meantime, this is maximum pressure for this room, so we can go ahead and disconnect this from the gas vent. It no longer is going to matter. So now if I wanted to, let's take a look and see how this works. I'm going to hook up this vent and let some hydrogen start seeping into this thing. Now let's take a look at something. So the temperature in this room is already pretty cold. It's minus 28 degrees roughly in uh, Celsius. We use this again and it's going to start cooling down even further. Look at that. We're already down to minus 31, then minus 32, etc. So this is how we are going to be able to start cooling this area off extremely rapidly. I like it. All right. With that being done, can we now <laughs> hook up some cold water into this system? Maybe. Um, first off, let's go ahead and allow some hot polluted water to get into this system. First off, I mean, I have a, I have a lot of water that's built up over here, so the sooner I can start finally getting some out of here, probably the better. Anyway, so that's going to go in until this thing is completely full. Then we did actually make use of this. Awaiting coolant, you say. Wait a minute. Hold on. When you say coolant, 400 kilograms must be located in here. Okay, so we just got to fill this thing. I was going to say, if this is another one of them situations where I can't use... Oh, what did you... Why, why did you... Whatever. If this is one of those situations where I'm not allowed to use polluted water again, I'm going to get very peeved. But no, that's not it. Okay, so this thing is ready. All we got to do now is start actually, like, doing some tasks on this. Right? So let's go ahead and start creating like some iron, some gold, some something or whatever. And let's just go ahead and get this thing running and see how well it works. So let's look at this liquid pipe thermosensor. If it is above, let's say 30 degrees Celsius, above 30 degrees, I want to turn on the liquid shutoff and start forcing the water back through here. Anything lower than that, by all means, send it right back into the refinery. Now, just for science, I'm going to disconnect this over here. I don't actually want to continue feeding a lot more hydrogen into this thing, at least until I have a chance to see what we can do with it. But yeah, it's kill it, it's uh, cooling things down. Gosh, the words today, they just don't come out of my mouth. It's cooling down a lot. No doubt about it. So this can handle 80k DTUs. Is that what it's saying? How much are we going to produce? 16k DTUs? Oh my god, yeah, this thing is gross overkill, is what I'm getting out of this. Gross overkill for a metal refinery. Huh, maybe something we can do is start siphoning some hot air from all of this into this room, so that we can start cooling off this entire area, especially around the power plant. Alright, we're delivering a bit of metal over here, copper ore. Um, remind me, who is gonna be my operator? It could be Bad Burrito, could be Alpha, could be Viola. There's Viola right there. All right, so we're going to drop off a lot. And what happened? We were already out of power. Oh, gosh dang it. What happened now? Um, how are we out of power? Oh, dang it all. Um, oh, ah, no. The second we turn it on, we immediately kill whatever power we had in there. I need more power production. And frankly, that's already true because the whole natural gas generator situation we've got. So you know what time it is? It's time for... A bunch of coal generators. Yup, I'm not thrilled about it either, but it does need to happen. We're gonna go ahead and hook this stuff up, like so. And you know, I wouldn't mind having a smart battery, but of course that takes refined metal, which I don't have anymore. Okay, now we're producing a lot more power, but it's still not enough to get this thing going. Oh, what the heck is going on here? Why does this thing shut down instantly every time? Does that mean we have to do a heavy watt wire? It honestly might. Maybe we have no choice but to use heavy watt wires on our metal refinery. That could very well be, and I'm not happy about it. Whoa, 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 we got some sort of overload damage over here. Ah, yes, once I hooked all this stuff up, there's a teeny bit of little cables right here that are like, ah, oh, we can't handle the heat. There we go. All right, we took care of all that stuff, so now you guys should be able to operate this sucker, right? I just want to test this before I end today's video, dang it. I want things to work. Use- Yay! All right, Viola's using the thing. Now let's take a look at the plumbing and see what's going to happen with this. I'm pretty sure once it's done, it's going to send out a bunch of coolant like so. Now the coolant is coming out at 41 degrees Celsius. It's going to go through here, and it's going to cool down very, very quickly. Oh yes, oh my yes, this is very cold. It's gonna leave the system at eight degrees Celsius, 
And of course, because it is not above the desired temperature, it's not gonna go through this liquid shutoff valve. It's gonna go directly into this. If anything, we are greatly cooling this system, not heating it up. Okay, now I do feel like I need a little bit more of my water in the system though for this to work. So, uh, let me first, do 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 do. Cause we, we kind of flush the entire system. It goes through all these pipes and then we can't do another job in a row. I wanna be able to do multiple. So let's do something like this, hook these up. Why is this not going where I wanted it to go? Answer, we probably need, probably need to do this. There we go, all right. Looking for the places where you can disconnect it. So now we have more of this getting into the system, blah, blah, blah. We'll let this all cool off as long as it doesn't like get so cold that it bursts the pipes. Oh gosh, is that actually a thing that could happen? I didn't even think about that. Well, now I'm scared. Hang on. Hang on, let's uh, let's disconnect this again. Thank you, it was great while it lasted. All right, perfect. That honestly probably is gonna be enough liquid. It's gonna be enough. The most important thing is we totally got this system up and running. It only took like three hours to do. <laughs> you guys wonder why I don't play oxygen not included very often on this channel? That's just exactly the reason why. Anyway, so we're filling this sucker right back up. It's ready for another job. Didn't take too long. And the temperature of the water going back in is getting nice and cold. And then we heat it right back up to about 30 something degrees and bada boom. Okay, and it's actually coming through at about 20 degrees now, so this is looking a little bit more reasonable. Ooh, if anything, it's looking like it's warming up too much. Yep, you can see the air temperature has gone up quite a bit. So all we gotta do now is hook this back up and we're gonna start feeding very small amounts of hydrogen back in here and start cooling the room until we are happy with it. Wow, okay, quite the endeavor that we have taken upon ourselves today. But you know what? I think it worked. And in the meantime, we're gonna take care of our immediate power needs. We're gonna get all this up and running. And actually, you know, something I would really benefit from is a freaking smart battery over here so that we can tell these things to turn off if we are overproducing, but you get the idea. I am tired. I am gonna end this video here. I think this was a surprising amount of progress. As long as we are now meeting our oxygen needs, our power needs, and we are able to deal with some coolant and stuff over here so we can start dealing with our metal, and we have dealt with the Drekos, which by the way, this thing is gradually cooling down. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. In that case, um, I think the only thing we're missing is an infinite water supply from our water. And guess what? I think we found a way to cool it. So then we'll really be ready to start going crazy all over the map. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.